Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So it's the start of January. I'm a little bit behind, but let's see if we can get caught up with getting some of these seeds sown. And it's time to annoy my wife a little bit because I'm going to start making a mess in the house. So I'm already making a mess in the kitchen. I've got my seeds, chili seeds, soaking in uh, tea and they've just been left here overnight. So uh, I better get this tidied up before I get into any more trouble. And while I'm here, let me get this washed up because this it's time to get the propagators out let's get these cleaned up so we can get maximum light and everything into here yes buddy that's here i want to get in trouble so this is why i get into trouble So you might not think it's possible to be growing a lot of seeds in January, but there's so many seeds that you can sow right now. And we're just going to make a start to try and make a dent into that little, you know, into that little list. Okay, you, f you fill that for me then. So the first seeds on my list, I've been talking about them a few times now, chilies. Okay, now normally I sow my chilies in December, but I'm a little bit late. So we're going to get as many sown as we can. I've got that propagator on. We've got some yellow naga and some other nagas popping up. But we're going to get the rest of these chilies planted now. So I've just had my latest seed order through and we'll... I can get cracking now. You're doing a brilliant job on that, well done. Let me show you the varieties of seeds that I've got this year. We're growing lots of home save seeds. So that's a yellow habanero. There's a purple tiger or a pink tiger as sometimes they're called. Chocolate habanero, absolutely beautiful chocolate, chocolate habanero. Um, got some of those plants over winter actually. Lots of red naga and aji lemons or some people call them lemon drops. Yellow naga. So these seeds that I've saved, they're still in their original packaging and they're not that old actually. So I'm not going to go through the tea soaking method with these. I don't need to because they're still very fresh seeds. Um, but we'll get these soaked and let me get some of the ones from the kitchen. I've had a question that gets asked quite regularly and let's see if we can get this answered and cleared up properly. Now, Dr. Singh, he's asked a few questions in his comments. Now, one of the things he's asked is one of the, what are the um, easiest chilies to germinate? Now, when it comes to chilies, sowing uh, milder varieties are generally easier. Uh, so things like Hungarian hot wax, that's a very mild chili, really easy to germinate. Sweet peppers are quite easy to germinate. Um, medium range, you know, the basket of fire types, the pot varieties, patio varieties, they're very easy to germinate. Basket of fire is a good variety for that. As you get hotter up the scale, it gets harder to germinate. So things like your Carolina Reapers, they're going to be the hardest. Uh, the Carolina Reapers, your Jalokias, your Nagas, these are generally a little bit harder to germinate and harder to keep alive. So I've got my uh, Jalokia seeds, see, uh, soaking in this tea and let's get this out so if you notice the way I sow my chilies or generally a lot of my seeds I sow them all into one pot rather than into individual seed trays or different things like that I don't want to waste compost and I need to maximize on the limited space that I have so all my chilies are planted there and I've left about half an inch space of gap at the top. You know, I'm going to cover that quite deeply. So plenty of soil over the top. In Dr. Singh's question, he asks what kind of compost is best, peat free or peat. Now, generally when it comes to compost, I'm not a fan of using peat based compost. I don't think it's necessary at all. But at the same time, I recognize that the peat free composts that are available are really poor quality. A lot of them are very, very poor quality. So if you look for a seed compost, but seed composts are generally a lot of sand, they're expensive to buy, and I think you can make it at home uh, really cheaply. All you need is a little bit of sand, uh, a little bit of garden soil and compost. Now this mixture is my homemade compost. It's my compost from my used plants. So it's probably about 60% compost, mixture of used and homemade garden compost. And then garden soil, probably about 20%. And then 20% sand as well, sharp sand I use. It doesn't want to really be rich. It just wants to be a neutral medium for your seeds to germinate in. So let's get, get this in the propagator. 
I better get a label on it before I start messing up again like I did before. There we go. Now I can go into the propagator. Now the next seeds on my list of things to sow are onions. Like, again, onions, I prefer to sow them in sort of November, December time. Again, I'm late with them. I've got a few growing in the greenhouse already, but I better get some more planted now and just catch up on where I'm supposed to be. Now, I've got a few different types this year. So these are struck garter onions. Um, and I saw them into these strawberry punnets. And I saw them quite thick, actually. So I don't, I don't mind about how tightly they're packed when it's in, into these. Because when I pull them out, I'm going to let them grow in here. And I'm going to let them get to about pencil thick in here. And then I'm going to pull them out and separate them as bunches. I get pretty good germination like that. And I get pretty good maturity. Ordinarily, when it comes to onions, I don't mind putting onions in the greenhouse. I'd start these off in a cold greenhouse and just allow time to... Um, and just allow them to germinate over time but because i'm so far behind on where i want to be i'm going to keep these in the house and get a jump on the season another one that i'm going to get sown straight away are lettuces now when it comes to lettuces for winter germinations i don't pr i prefer the frilly leaf type the loose leaf type lettuces rather than the um, head forming type they're just a little bit easier to grow and because it's winter and we haven't got the best climate the loose leaf ones do a lot you know they're, they're my go-to ones for for this sort of thing and for this i'm going to go for red red velvet lettuce they're a beautiful rich red leaf with shades of pink in them and again, sow these quite, don't worry about how thick you're sowing them. I'm not someone who is very precise when it comes to these things. And I don't think you have to be, other things yes, but maybe not with lettuce. If, I'll pot these on as they grow. Lettuce actually benefit from having uh, a little bit of light to help them germinate so rather than cover them with an inch of compost or half an inch of compost i'm just going to give them a light dusting just so there's good soil contact on every seed so i'm hardly going to cover them i just want enough soil contact to get the seeds to germinate but i don't want to uh, give them too dark an environment I think there's another element of Dr. Jag's uh, question that I've not answer, asked. So the idea of dipping the seeds in tea, why do we soak the seeds in tea and how long do we do soak them for? So generally what happens when you're buying seeds from manufacturers or seed suppliers, you're getting seeds that are washed and processed to keep them and, and dried to keep them for, on the shelf for a long time. Now, what, one of the things that we want to do is we want to, break down any sort of protective barriers, anything uh, that's happened through the, through the drying process. We want to give them a little bit of infusion of water and a little bit of bacteria that's going to naturally be found in the tea and organic substances, most organic su substances, that's just going to waken that seed up again. And because tea is slightly acidic, it helps break down that seed coating and get the seed to germinate a little bit quicker. When it comes to seeds, Anything that's old, dry, hard, you know, anything with a tough shell, we go for the tea soaking solution and try and get our seeds germinated that way. It's always worked for us. My mum's uh, used this for years and years and years. Um, yeah, and, and her mum before her, so there you go. Now, the last part of Dr. Jag's question was, um, he's going to germinate them next to a radiator. Now, before I got my propagators, that's exactly what I did. Uh, I kept them next to radiators, skyboxes, uh, on top of the boiler, anywhere that's going to be keeping them warm. Because the soil temperature for chilies wants to be around 18 to 22 C, that kind of de range will get your chilies to germinate quite nicely. But once you've got them germinated, then you need to get them under lights because simply at this time of the year, we're just not getting enough light. Just like humans are lacking in vitamin D at this time of year, our plants are going to be lacking in the light that they need. Now, other seeds that you can get sown right now, I've got three different types of carrots here. Oh, no, that's not carrot. 
I've got three different types of clarets here. So I've got resistor fly, which is supposed to be um, carrot fly resistant, but it's okay. It's not fantastic, but it's supposed to be. We've got autumn king, which is a fantastic main crop. So sowing them in about March time is good. Sowing them later on in the season is good because they go well into the winter. But for sowing now, early nantes is absolutely fantastic. The earlier varieties of carrots, you can get them, get away with sowing them now and you can get a quick harvest on them. So we'll get into the greenhouse and we'll sow them. And we'll take a few other seeds to sow in the greenhouse as well. So all the seeds that you can get away with sowing right now, uh, where have they gone? I had them here a second ago. Towards the end of this month, towards the start of February, I'm going to sow my tomatoes. A lot of people will tell you to not grow tomatoes before March because we haven't got the light in the days. Um, but I prefer to grow them now. If tomatoes get a little bit leggy, just bury them deeper. If they get too leggy, sacrifice that plant and use the suckers. And then you've already bought yourself some time. Now, I prefer early harvest of tomatoes. I'm getting harvest from the end of May and when other people are still planting their tomatoes out. Other seeds that we're going to sow today, we're going to sow kohlrabi. I've got a few, um, yeah, I've got a few packets here that are old packets here. But and where are those cabbages gone? We had some cabbages here a few minutes ago. Greyhounds are fantastic variety to sow now. Um, it's a really small. It's not a massive cabbage, but it's a small one that grows really easily. Uh, I'm going to grow these red drumhead uh, as well towards the end of this month. So for this, I'm going to need to take this tub into the greenhouse. Yeah, Bismillah. Oh, yeah, it's heavy. Let's use that wheelbarrow. So this pot, it's one that I grew carrots in last year. It's a mixture that I've made specifically for carrots. It's about 50% sand, about 10% garden soil, and 40% compost. Okay, so it's a very uh, mild sort of mix, very fine mix. And it's one that, once I make these carrot boxes, these are the ones that I grow carrots in every year. And I find that carrots always are best grown in containers. In containers, they're just less susceptible to carrot root fly. So I'll just give that a little dig take out any big bits that I see and I'm still finding bits of plastic all over the place and just to rejuvenate that box because it's been, I've had one sowing of carrots in it already and um, it's been sat outside and got a little bit waterlogged I'm just going to use some sift compost so I'm not going to add loads I don't need loads for it this is very finely sift, sifted compost I'm just going to add that to the mix you don't need to add loads, I just need a little bit to give it a bit of rejuvenation. And that's it. So just give it a nice flat surface for you to sow your carrots on. And like I said, I'm not one that can sow carrot seeds or small seeds in a real um, organised way. So when it comes to carrots, I prefer to sprinkle just like I'm sprinkling a bit of salt or pepper on my, on my chips. They might be a little bit thick but we'll thin some of them out. So what I tend to do is I thin them out for baby carrots and let the rest of them go on to full size carrots. But the early varieties, they generally stay a little bit smaller. So you'll be all right with these. And then it's just a little bit of compost over the top. Again, these are seeds that like, these are seeds that like a lot of darkness. And that's it. Once you've got them covered with compost, just cover them with a bit of cardboard as well. Come back and check them in about a week's time because they're quick to germinate. Uh, yeah, just keep coming back and checking them in a week's time because what you don't want is you don't want the seeds to come up and hit against that cardboard. You want them to be able to, you want them to have some space to grow in. Now these next seeds on my list, now these are probably on everyone's list at the moment. And for these, you don't need, you know, fine sifted, really fine compost. Look, you can see the grading difference in my compost that I'm using. I don't even mind sticks being in there. Now these are broad beans that I'm sowing. Now a lot of people will go for aqua dulce variety. Aqua dulce are particularly good for overwintering, but most broad beans will do fine. These are seeds that we've saved ourselves. I've got some aqua dulce in the house that I'll get sown as well. So I'll probably sow about 100 broad bean plants in the next few days. I won't have time in this today's video to sow my spinach, my chard, um, my pak choy, 
these are things that you can really get away with growing now. Um, mustard, so um, life at the, um, cha the so a lot of the Chinese mustards you can sow right now and they'll be perfectly fine in a cold greenhouse. But the last thing on my list for today is going to be peas. Now, these are seeds that we've saved ourselves. And if you've seen my Patreon video on my seed sorting, you'll see all about these. I used to try and organise these into a figure of five, but yeah, I just go for a bit more of a uh, randomised sowing nowadays, just because it's a little bit quicker. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what I mean by figure of five is a really good way of planting is if you plant plant four seeds in a square like that and then one in the middle, it's a really good way of planting. But I, th I find this works just as well. And this gutter method, absolutely fantastic because you can get them started in a greenhouse like this. It doesn't take lots of space. So when all these peas have germinated and grown up, just go and chuck them in the, you know, slide the whole thing straight out of the gutter into the ground. No chickens in here this year, so we're not going to have any problems with germination. And again, you can see the grade of compost that I'm using for these bigger seeds. It's really rough. It's not sifted. It, so if you are buying sort of uh, shop bought compost that's quite unrefined, for bigger seeds, you don't need to worry about it. It'll germinate pretty well. It's just for the smaller seeds that you might have to do a bit of work on it. So cold winter sowings of peas, if you, so if you soak them beforehand, I have noticed that they do tend to rot a little bit easier. You can just see the worms that are in this compost. This is what you want from your compost. You want something that's alive, you know, really rich, really alive. I'm not going to water it because the compost is quite wet, but there's uh, and in about a week's time, two weeks time, I'm going to have pea shoots coming out of there. We're coming into, um, very quickly, we're in the end of February and spring's knocking right on your door. So there's a list of seeds that you can sow this month, so get cracking. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. And if you want to support our channel, why not become a patron? I'll see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi